for a slam in four, I'm asking you in teams of two to create a thematic comparison map. And uh, I'd like to show you from the beginning how to complete the assignment. I thought about picking up right where we left off at the end of Wednesday's class, but uh, what I covered in class is worthwhile to go through again. Uh, you don't have to, and if you're comfortable with where we're at, feel free to jump to video two. But if not, um, for this first video, I'll just go over what we covered in class on Wednesday. On the class Blackboard, underneath the in-class exercise files section, uh, I'll click on this first one. And it contains a zipped package that if you extract it or open it or just get inside of it somehow, you'll see a folder called GIS data. What I'll do is I'll just copy that using my shortcut keys and I will place it on my desktop. Inside of this folder, we've got the national atlas stuff that we downloaded in class, just the country outline with the states, as well as the shapefile created from the Avenza tutorial data. So that again was from nationalatlas.gov. This is where you will come to get your maps and data to complete the assignment. So more on that later. Back in ArcMap, I'll add that um, the state's 020 data. Now, if you don't have a connection to your desktop, you can add it by clicking this button right here, the one with the little plus. That's how you create a folder connection. I've already created one for my desktop, but by default it won't show up in this drop-down list. So from my desktop, JS data states 020, I'll add the 020 shapefile. Now mine will just line up. Because we created this National Atlas projection, we created and defined it in class. If you've already done that, yours may just load and it'll show whatever name you gave it when you created it. If you get the error message about projection, what you'll need to do is get the projection definition information from the National Atlas website. So I'll go through this really quick. Get your pause button ready if you need it. Underneath Mapping Professionals, you can go to Raw Data. There's a link called follow for more information and then there's another link for detailed help and one of the questions is about shapefiles and eventually there's a link if you click it it'll give you a snippet of code that you can copy or a snippet of text so what I'll do is just paste this into a text file and it's a uh, it's pretty messy at first but if you just click in front of the capital names, you can quickly organize these by their name and value pair. And this is the information that you'll need to define a projection. So the geo GCS is geographic coordinate system, atom spheroid, prime meridian, etc. So to define that, and again, you don't need to do it if it just worked, if you've already done this in class, but if not, after this is placed, You'll want to go to your Arc Toolbox window, then to Data Management Tools, uh, down to Projections and Transformations, and then select Define Projection. You'll have to select that feature set, which is right here. Click on this button, click on New, Geographic, and you can name it whatever you want. And now it's essentially just connecting the information from that projection snippet. So the geographic coordinate system we just did, the datum is the D North American 1983. It's way down here. And the rest of it should auto-populate with the exception of the unit and the meridian. Um, but that's just good for double checking because if it was way off, this information compared to this information. There would be red flags, but fortunately this lines up. Angular unit is degree, prime meridian is Greenwich. Hit finish, hit apply, and okay, okay. Now it's defined. Now you'll see a little lock symbol here. That's just telling you that uh, it's processing. As soon as that goes away, it'll be done processing. You can also look down here, oh it just went away, 
but there's a little status bar showing you what would happen. You may still need to apply it to your map, the projection you just defined. So if I right click on my layer, go to properties, open up my layers, I should see, yeah, that's the one I just named. I could select it and hit apply. It's exactly the same, so it shouldn't matter. Um, I don't know why it didn't show up. It probably does when I close this. Right click, just double checking. Yeah, so there's my wonderfully named projection. You'll probably want to name it something else like National Atlas Projection because you can reuse it for any other shape files you download from the nationalatlas.gov website. Regardless, it is now projected. And that step needs to be done before you do the next step, which is add the other shape file. And I'm doing this just for comparison purposes. You know, from this angle and this scale, they look the same, but if you zoom in and turn one on and off, you can really see the difference. And you just want to be aware of the level of detail of the information you're working with. This top file is um, the one from derived from the Avenza tutorial data. If I turn it on and off, you can really see the detail difference. So the other nice thing about importing different uh, layers of information is that you can reproject really easily to whatever you imported if it had its own projection information, which this did. And it actually is a, a format that's much more agreeable to the type of map we want to create. So to change the projection, or to do any kind of transformation in ArcMap, you want to right click on your layers, top level view, go to properties, make sure you have coordinate system selected. And you could either flip through the hundreds and hundreds of different systems. If you have one in your favorites, you can just go ahead and select it. And there's the one I made on Wednesday. Or you can go to layers, and my USA area one happens to have the Albers equal area one. So if I highlight that, hit apply, um, just telling you that they're different. Now I can close this. So I can see that they are now in this format. So I'll get rid of that USA area one. That was just for comparison. Once it's removed, you know, the, the projection doesn't change, which is nice. At this stage, what I want you to do is get rid of everything that is not the lower 48 states. And we'll do that through some creative attribute selecting. Right click over that feature, open up attributes table, and we can see here that instead of 50 rows, which the other one had, this has thousands because um, it includes every little island uh, every little state. So Alaska alone probably has, you know, a thousand rows in this table. But to quickly get rid of everything that is not the lower 48 states, uh, you really have to take an inventory of the attributes you have to work with. So for example, we've got order admission, and that's zero through 50. Zero is for all of those outlining, like Puerto Rico, Virgin Islands, etc., um, and the District of Columbia. Everything else is in order. Hopefully you know from high school that Hawaii and Alaska are 49 and 50 respectively. So with that we can build a query and we'll do that by clicking on the select by attributes button here. So the query is sort of started for you right here. It's saying select something, that's kind of the wild card, that asterisk, from this table where, uh, so we need to say where order admission is greater than zero, I'm just typing zero, and order admission is less than or equal to 48. So that will find me everything that is one through 48. If I hit verify, you know, that's just a nice way to check to make sure that the expression works, and I can hit apply. Uh, the problem here is it's not selecting the District of Columbia, which we want. If I zoomed in, we could probably see that. Oh, it's somewhere down here. It's so small that uh, I can't see it at this scale. But it's not being selected. I think it's right there. Yep, there it is. So we need to edit our query because it's not quite right. 
back to the select by attribute. It still has what we typed in before. So what I could say is, uh, or, whoops, and I, I could type it, but I'll, I'll click the little query building buttons here just to make sure it's right. Or state equals, whoops, not two equals, let me delete that. Click on this, get unique values. And that way, I'm making sure I'm not making any mistakes. District of Columbia. But there's one problem here. It's tough to know if the query will do the and part first or the or part first. Let's just see what happens. Apply. And that actually did work, but um, what I would recommend just to make sure you know what is happening first you can segment your query by putting parentheses around it. Whoops, I put it on the wrong side. So by putting this part in parentheses, I'm forcing it to say, first pick everything that is meets this criteria, then do the rest of the statement. Hit apply. Uh, that should all be selected. And if I scroll through my attributes table, you can see that as soon as I hit uh, the rows that meet that statement, they're also highlighted. So let's go ahead and close that. Let's zoom out. So at this point, I want to take this data and make it its own layer. So I really, what I'm really doing here is creating a new data set. And you do that by right-clicking on your layer, go to Data, and Export Data. By default, it'll always call it Export Underscore Output but we want to give it a specific name and put it in a specific spot. So I'm going to do browse. I'll go to the same folder and I'll actually make its own folder. Call this a uh, lower 48 and I will name it. Oh, make sure I go in there. Also name this lower 48. Uh, lastly, very important. I want to save this as a shape file. And we're really telling it to save a bunch of files by doing this one thing because it's saving the projection and uh, the index and the attribute and all that. So I'll click OK. Finally, it should ask if you want to add it to the map, which we do. So at this point, I can get rid of the other one. I'll right click and remove. It's not destroying the data, it's just unlinking it from this file. And uh, I'll zoom extents. So we're closer to what we want. You know, now's a good time to save it. So you can call it whatever you want. I will call this uh, assignment for example one. Uh, back to the data view. All we need to do to get two maps to compare, you'll always have one data frame on this, and this represents your PDF. You know, this is the extents of your 8.5 by 11 inch PDF that you'll eventually be saving. So if I uh, just position this frame like this for the time being, and if you hold on control as you click and drag, it'll make a copy. And, and a couple things really happen here. It makes a copy, but then in your layer views, you can also see that it got two now over there. And if I go back to this mode, um, Whichever one is bold is the one you're working in. You can right click and select activate to make that the active layer. We're linking to the same information, but we can style it different, which is really the point of this assignment. Um, so same information, just a different style. And the last thing in this video that I'll show you just to illustrate that is uh, I'll right click over the feature name on this lower one and I'll select um, properties then go to symbology and uh, I'll do categories I'll select state as the value add all values that should give me about 50 and then hit apply that just gives me a random color but back on this view I can see that uh, is reflected so I guess what I should probably do is name these appropriately call this a uh, compare one and call this one compare to. So this is where we ended on Wednesday and this is where video two will pick up.